So you want to put quest hooks in your D&D game. Well, recently I started the poll where I asked, what module would you want to run after your first starter set campaign? I got all this data, and today I want to talk about the top 10 modules that people want to have quest hooks for. I'm going to show you how to put them in your campaign correctly, because there is a way to do it incorrectly. An example of a quest hook that is just too damn enticing for its own good is in Storm King Sunder, where halfway through you meet this dead giant. He's a ghost. He's a cloud giant ghost who was murdered by his father. So the players have to track down this murderous, deadbeat, jealous dad in his floating car castle and get vengeance on him. And that's so interesting. But the problem is you meet this ghost halfway through the campaign and then you have to do all of Storm King's Sunder before you can actually pursue this quest, which takes you to Tyranny of Dragons. But it's going to be way easier to avoid that problem of an enticing quest hook in a shorter campaign. Now, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, you can run this thing in three or four sessions. So the time between the enticement of I love this quest hook and the payoff of we get to engage with this very exciting quest is much shorter. So I asked people on X, formerly Twitter.com, what are the modules that you would want to run into from Stormwreck Isle? And here's the top 10. We're going to run through them today. Uh, the most popular being the last one, which is the Shattered Obelisk. If you're interested in plot hooks for any modules that aren't listed in this video, then you can get every single plot hook for every single module on my Patreon right now for six bucks. For six bucks, you get literally everything I've ever published. It's a steal. Go steal it. Let's begin. Number 10 is the Candlekeep Mysteries, which is that big old library. So during the campaign of Stormwreck Isle, when the players go to the Compass Rose, they are going to find in the loot a waterlogged book. But somehow when they take it out of the water, oh, it's not damaged at all. It's magical. They open it up and it starts chattering at them. It's a magical book and it says it's overdue and it demands to be returned to the greatest library in all the land. After the players have wrapped up their business on Stormwreck Isle, hey, they probably still have this book and it's going to get more pushy demanding to be returned to Candlekeep. And if they toss it away or just ignore it, then a bunch of warrior monk librarians from Candlekeep show up and go, hey, re return this book. And they probably arrest the players and take them to, to library jail. Oh no. Number nine is the Witchlight Carnival. This is something that can happen as kind of a random encounter during the campaign for you to plant the hook. They encounter this strange, tall, bird-like woman pulling like a kind of carnival trailer thing. And she asks the players, have you seen my owlbear? He escaped. I don't know where he is. I've got to get him back or I'm going to be in trouble. Oh, well, you haven't seen him. Well, while you're here, you might as well play me the game of darts. It's really fun. You can win a prize. Just devise some simple rolling mechanic for it. And when the players win or lose this game, she says, hey, you are great sports. Why don't you swing by the Witchlight Carnival? Where just by pretty much most major cities, swing on by next time you're there. And then after Stormwreck Isle, the players are probably going to catch a ship off the island. On this ship is the most insufferable family you've ever heard of. Two wealthy parents with their spoiled brat of a kid. And they're saying, oh, why do we have to stop off here? Surely we have to get our precious little son to the carnival. It's his birthday and he cannot miss out on visiting the Witchlight Carnival. We must get there ASAP. And the players are going to hate this kid. They're going to hate this parents. And they're probably going to want to go to the carnival just to like beat this kid at carnival games. <laughs> Number seven, the yawning portal, specifically the sunless citadel. For this one, the players are going to rescue a human kind of captive in tattered roads aboard the Compass Rose. Doesn't matter what justification you have for why he's there. This is somebody that is under the sway of a particular goblin shaman from the Sunless Citadel. And their job is to entice adventurers to come and plunder this place uh, so that the goblins can, can pick their corpses and stuff. Then... After the campaign, this character says, look, you did me such a great favor saving me from that harpy on that ship. And now we're on this ship uh, getting passage off the island together. I don't have anything to repay you, but I do know where there is a mountain of treasure that could more than more than pay for my passage, etc. And this is the Sunless Citadel. Or how about number six, which is Descent into Avernus. Descent into heck. So when the players 
<laughs> encounter zombies at one of the numerous times they will during this campaign on Stormwreck Isle. One of the zombies is a fancy boy. He's got fancy tattered clothes. He's got fancy rings. Maybe even put a little bit of gold loot on him. But the players also find a waterproof kind of wax sealed letter of admission into Baldur's Gate. You see, there's a refugee crisis in Baldur's Gate, and somehow this person has managed to gain access, special access for him and his retainers. Now, after the campaign, when the players board the ship and the players uh, have their, their documents and stuff checked by the customs officer on the ship, he goes, oh, he sees this, he goes, oh, you're this lord and you're heading towards Baldur's Gate, are you? And the players, <laughs> when given the opportunity to impersonate um, a lord, they will always say yes. And now you are on your way to heck. Number six, Tyranny of Dragons. So this one's a bit fun because one of the kobolds canonically has a dagger that they are sure is magical. But oh, this dagger hasn't done anything special yet. But when the players finally defeat Spark Render, the evil blue dragon at the end, oh, I'm, ge I'm getting a delivery. <laughs> we'll get back to this. Hello. What up? You good there? Uh, yeah. So what was I saying? There's a kobold. He's got a magical dagger. When the players kill Spark Render, this kobold gives that dagger to the players and says, here, you deserve this. Turns out it's a magical dagger made of dragon's tooth that is only a plus two dagger in the hands of a dragon slayer. And this kobold gives that dagger to the person that lands the killing blow on Spark Render. Now, after the campaign, the players might meet a merchant or someone knowledgeable and says, you have a dragon tooth dagger. That is the mark of an accomplished dragon slayer. You got to hear about some wacky stuff that's going on with dragons. And then we are into tyranny of dragons. Do you like my new table? It just arrived. Number five, Curse of Strahd. This one's going to be super easy. You see, when the players are on the island at some point, oh my goodness, there's fog on the horizon. Oh, spooky. Oh, well, let's continue off the adventure. And then when the players try to leave the island after they finish everything, that fog closes in on them and bing, bang, boom, we're in Barovia. It's just the easiest. It's so easy. Isn't it easy? Here's number four, Dragons of Ice Spire peak. So during this one, at some point, have Runara say to the party, hey, dragon slayers used to rock up here all the time, but they haven't been here for a while because there's some kind of crisis with a white dragon on the mainland. But then after the campaign finishes, after they slay Sparkrender, Runara says to them, look, you've seen our philosophy here of non-violence. And if the dragon slayers on the mainland have their way, then this can only end in bloodshed. But hopefully, after what we've seen of our order here, you can at least attempt to resolve the situation on I Spy a Peak peacefully. And then she hands the players the bounty on Cryovane. Ooh, we're getting there. Number three, Storm King's Thunder. So when the players are in the Abbey, there's a library. And at this library, they can learn about the historical and primordial conflict between giants and dragon. Mate, these guys hate each other, can't stand each other. Then at the end of the campaign, after they've defeated Spark Render, then Lord Adron will say to the players, I understand now my place is here defending the Abbey, not going about the world picking fights. Although it pains me that I can't get out there and deal with this unruly and disorderly giant problem that is now plaguing the land, uh, I must stay here. So now the players know giants are doing crazy stuff out there. And then when the players leave the island, whichever town they land in, whichever city, ask them wherever they want to go, you have that be the city that gets attacked, just like Bryn Shander might get attacked. <sighs> so this one might seem a little bit obtuse because we're going to connect to Waterdeep Dragon Heist, which is number two on our list. We're going to connect to this one uh, through Volo, who is writing a book. He's one of the, the quest hooks at the very start of um, that book. So during Stormwreck Isle, the players are going to find an unfinished manuscript, like a do not, or my cat just <laughs> knocked the camera, a do not distribute version of this book. And it is riddled with errors, all kinds of things like spelling mistakes, just misinformation, hand-drawn doodles, maybe like shopping lists, all kinds of stuff is made into this draft. And the librarian says, hey, you know, that kind of artifact, that might be really valuable to the author. They're not going to want that out there. It says it's someone named Volo and they're from Waterdeep. 
I reckon he'd pay good money to get this off production. You, he doesn't want anybody to see this. And the players can go there with a copy of Olo's book. And uh, yeah, we're down to number one, which is the Shattered Obelisk slash Lost Minds of Fandelver, because they are pretty much the same campaign. This is, this is what everyone's super excited about. So I would say for your prologue of Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, you actually run the prologue of Lost Minds of Fandel, where the players meet Gundren and he says, guys, you're my best friends. We're all such good mates, but I need you to go out there and find this mysterious puzzle box for me. Where is the puzzle box? It's in a dragon's hoard on an island. It's called Stormwreck Island. No, I don't think that's that's important of anything. No, you'll be fine. Go on. Thank you, players. The players go and retrieve this puzzle box and they go, we've got to meet Gundren in Phandalin. They head to Phandalin, bing, bang, boom, you're in that campaign now. Hey, you want more dosy stuff? Check this one out. It's all about what it would take to get different NPCs to join the party. 